What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yeah, and have guests on who like to get scared with us, too. Yeah, like, and uh, are into getting scared professionally oh, by yeah. professionals. That's right. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that. We have John Schnitzer here, who made the documentary Haunters, the art of the scare. Haunted houses are designed to make us laugh, <laughs> to make Make us scream, and they make us feel like kids again. I'm so excited. Yeah, like if you haven't seen it, maybe pause this and go watch it. Stop this. Go watch it and come back. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix right now. Where else is it? Elsewhere as well. It's so many (laughs) elsewhere. I'm so stoked. (laughs) It's like actually, if you go to hauntersmovie.com, you can see all the different places you can see it. And if you get it on um, the DVD or the Blu-ray on Amazon. Or on iTunes Extras, it comes with 30 minutes of bonus features. Nice. So I love those bonus you know, features. It's on man. Voodoo. It's it's all over the place. Cool. And yeah, I mean, it's the season. This is the perfect time yeah, for this, this episode because timing. once September hits, that's Halloween season. Because those are when all the haunts start, like Universal Halloween Horror Nights, which I'll be at. Uh, oh, shit. When this airs, I'll have already gone. Mm-hmm. So this is me in the past. Whatever. <laughs> Go get haunted, dude, and watch this fucking documentary. It's so great. We sat down to watch this, not Dude, knowing what to it's expect. It's buck wild. Seriously. You were looking at four years of my life in that oh documentary, God. but it's four years, including when it got released. Yeah. Because we were editing and tweaking it right up to its um, first film festival, you know, which was at a Fantastic Fest last year, which is a really fun festival. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. But... Um, yeah, no, it was a that was a four year process. I mean, look, sometimes some something happens, and you go, "Whoa, you just lost your professional hunt." When do you what are you gonna do now? I'll build it in my backyard. Okay, when that when's that gonna be? Maybe a year and a half from now. I'm like, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> is somebody keep doing this? <laughs> yeah, you know, you find yourself going down rabbit holes and wormholes, and years of your life will go by. But I'm stoked because look. If you had just filmed one Halloween season, how much Halloween, how much haunt would I have in the movie? I end up spending uh, most days after work and all weekends here up until uh, Halloween, which I take vacation to complete. And how many hours is the actual haunt open for? Uh, four. Four hours. That's it. On one night. And yeah, I didn't know that we were going to be watching something of that scale when we started. So when we're watching, uh, because it follows a bunch of different haunts, uh, and we can talk about them more specifically, but like you watch them. Yeah, like you said, they go through like ups and downs through like various seasons. And it's like, oh, shit, we're watching like people's lives kind of, man. It was great. I loved it. Thank you. It's a (laughs) subculture. I didn't, I had no idea just the, the depths and just the almost subcultures within that subculture. If someone's watching this and maybe all they know of haunts is like their local uh, trailer park haunt, like the one that... Like, <laughs> oh my God, yeah, the footage the footage you showed of Livonia, Michigan. Oh yeah, that's where we, that's, our area. Yeah, and it just... Yeah. That was so awesome to be able to have that in the movie. Yeah. Because you get to really see, this is where it started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. In Livonia, Michigan. Uh-huh. Yeah. You That's know? why it took us aback. We're like, oh shit, Livonia. The JCs, you know, and it was so cool to show what they were do- what they were doing, but also listening to what they had to say. Yeah. Like when they showed the monster get real close to the person, they say, Now don't get too close to the audience if you're playing a monster. They're liable to strike back. And and so the JCs, can you explain really quickly what that the Junior Chamber of Commerce. Okay. I still don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like an after, it's like an uh, organization for kids, you know, you can go do stuff. And these are early haunts too are very they're christian organized and christian sponsored okay so there's those are separate ones they're separate okay. so here's here's what's so interesting i always heard of like hell houses and i thought okay that's I've, what christians I've made i always wanted to go to one of those i did yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh my god i have a whole I'll tell you a whole bunch of stories <laughs> about hell houses uh but i always thought that's what it was like okay they do they're trying to scare you and get you at the end to get to convert. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, that's what Christians did with haunted houses. (laughs) But then I started looking up and finding out about um, campus life. And campus life was like 
that was the real originator of everything you see at Not Scary Farm, Universal Studios, most of the haunts you've ever seen, like the polka dot rooms where it's people in black outfits with uh, covering their face and they're all wearing the, the glow-in-the-dark polka dots and they have black lights everywhere and then one of them re- leaps out at you. The surgery scenes, all that stuff came from Campus Life. But Campus Life was an organization created by Youth for Christ. <laughs> I think that's so fascinating. Well, it's fascinating is that you can't get a lot of pictures from Youth for Christ. Uh-huh. No. Apparently the church wasn't like so thrilled with people having those pictures. Wow, because uh, what years would that have been? Oh my God, that's in the... Um, It's in the 60s. I just wonder how, yeah, looking back on it, especially because that's before satanic panic and stuff. So I wonder if just that shift totally changed how they feel about that Mm. legacy, you know? Because that kind of blew my mind that a church and a Christian group would create like like, satanic imagery. And And not just one church. This was a chain that went across the country. Yes. And they were huge. In Long Beach, they had one with... um, I think the numbers we were finding out about were like 20,000 people would show up to this one in Long Beach. I mean, it was massive numbers. Like John Murdy from Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights, he grew up going to campus life. <laughs> and it blew his mind, obviously. Yeah. It made him want to do it. You know, so you know, it was really <laughs> difficult to come by these pictures. <laughs> and it was so cool once we did because it was so much fun to see that homemade side of it all. You know, but then... The JCs took it further, and they kind of moved along with it. And uh, it's just it's interesting to see where haunts and horror where that all happens. I mean, I wanted to know like when was when was haunting and Halloween and horror when was the most profitable when they make the most amount of money because I'm you're doing a documentary you, you want to try to get the history section right yeah and that's when I started seeing all these weird dates and numbers I'm like wait a minute so all those Universal Studios monster movies the big classics came out during the Depression, and they were the huge hits yeah. during the Depression. You know, you look at um, Halloween as a holiday, which includes haunts and horror films and everything. The most amount of money it had ever made at, to that date was in 2001, so right after September 11, 2001. Once I saw that, I couldn't, I was like, whoa, this explains so much. Because I've always thought about the idea of like what I call scarapy. Like the <laughs> therapeutic value of getting scared, mm-hmm. you know, because I always feel great after I get scared. <laughs> you know, I, I I scream my head off, and you always notice this. Um, it's like a release. It's it's a huge release, but like there's like this dual rites of passage that goes on with haunting. Like in um in the movie, there's this little kid that says, after you go through it, you feel like a man. Do you get scared in there, but after you do it. Yeah. 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 So a real he, little kid who said He that. was talking to my nephew. He was trying to convince my nephew to go through one of the haunts. Uh-huh. <laughs> and my friend was like, I'm not going in there. <laughs> and he's trying to tell him, if you're going to feel like a man. And then when Char talks about haunting, she always talks about how it makes her feel like a kid again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's, the, that's what it is. You know, kids want to feel brave like adults. Adults want to feel like carefree like children. Mm-hmm. And as things have escalated <laughs> and, if, you know, all, you know, what we saw in the news with Gitmo and torturing, which then got reflected in horror films that had a lot of torture, which, you know, the so-called torture porn films, mm-hmm. you know, which is not what Saw and Hostel, you know, were setting out to do at all. They're just, those are great films. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it spawned a sub a whole subcategory of horror. So for anyone listening who, yeah, like I said, maybe just knows of Halloween Horror Nights or Not Scary Farm, where there are like just mazes uh, where, you know, there are a lot of fun effects and stuff and you walk through and people jump out at you and then you, you come out the other end and that's it. Uh, for me that, you know, I went there the past two years, like I was saying, and that has been the uh, extent of my experience with haunts and watching your documentary. It's like, there's oh, the whole world. Oh yeah. That's not even the beginning of it. The first extreme haunt was blackout. A lot of these things that we had been seeing in the media and then that we were seeing portrayed in these torture porn films, they were doing to the patrons. When they go through, the audience members have safe words. All they need to do is call it and um, the show will stop. Yeah, I actually saw in your AMA that you did on Reddit, which was a great read. I love that. But one of the comments you left said that uh, pertaining to safe words in these extreme haunts, which I promise we'll explain in a minute, Mm -hmm. uh, just how like... The, the the presence of them is so necessary 
uh, to feel good and the, the sense of accomplishment because the metaphor that you used just really stuck with me. It's running a marathon and pushing yourself and getting across that finish line as opposed to if there's not a safe word and you're unable to stop the experience, it's like you your body broke down and someone just dragged you across the finish line. Yeah. So there's no sense of accomplishment there. You know, what's funny is that came out when I was having a conversation with Russ. I was an, doing, doing an interview with Russ McCamey, who has the most, extre- most extreme terror simulation. Yeah, this is the thing simulation. I have so many questions I'll, I'll give about. you the answers. <laughs> does victim experience have a safe word? Yes. Does? There's only one. Was, uh, does Freakling Brothers yes. have a safe word? Okay. They all do. They just, only one. Just one. The Caney Manor does not have a safe word. That's just weak. I was asking him about no safe word. He was like, no, because we're like, we're really helping you get it to the, get to the finish line. It's like a marathon. I was like, no, no, without <laughs> having a safe word, it's like someone's dragging it. And he was like, you're wrong. You don't get the whole, you don't get what I'm talking about. I filmed a scare study that was so fascinating. That was, oh my God, it was so cool. It was this long, I was, I wanted to put it in the movie so bad, but the conclusions didn't come out. There's, there's still like another month or so off from coming out. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. This okay. is like, yeah, this has gone on for years. So it's a, a neuroscientist and a sociologist who studies fear put on a scare study in an extreme haunt in the basement. It's called the basement in, at the scare house in Pittsburgh. They scan your brains before you go in. Then they, you go through it. They scan your brains again. They typically were looking for couples to go through it. And they would, you, yeah, right. <laughs> you, you, you oh, I don't know. For, can I do it for science? I don't <laughs> it's know. It's for science, well, babe. <laughs> you know, they also wanted to make sure people who use the safe word to leave, mm-hmm. they were studying that as well. And they were finding out a lot of things like, okay, this it's not finished yet. But some of the stuff they were finding out was that, you know, if you use a safe word, it, and you didn't make it through the whole way, it actually can be really euphoric because you pulled yourself out. You went as far as you could. And what they were noticing is the people that use the safe word would most likely come back to see if mm-hmm. they can make it a little bit further, mm-hmm. Yeah, which is interesting. The other thing they found out that was a real trip was that because people were writing down whether they're in a good relationship or a bad relationship, <laughs> they were being real honest because the other person's not reading it. Mm-hmm. So people who were in a bad relationship when they had to hold hands during the really bad parts, it was worse than just being by yourself. Oh my wow. God, really? That's why a lot of people that are in a bad relationship that go to an extreme haunt break up. Wow. Really shortly after. But people who are in a good relationship after an extreme haunt, it's like, you know, it's like any action movie you've ever seen. Yeah. You went through mm-hmm. this crazy thing together and it brought you closer together and you have something to talk about. But it's such a funny thing to see what are you going to do in the worst case scenario? What are you going to learn about yourself when you go through these things? You know, even like a simple boost scare maze, you're going to be surprised. I didn't realize that just a fishing line could freak me out that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just feeling something, I'm like, oh my God. This- and that, that was a term that uh, was used a lot in the documentary, like boost scare maze. Is that boost like scare. universal? Is that just uh, like, what What would be your definition of a boost scare maze? A boost scare maze, yeah. It's basically... Like people can't touch you, they can just jump out at you? It's the Is traditional that- maze. Yeah. So we call it a boost scare maze because... I know it was funny. Donald later on didn't realize I was using that term so much. He's like, boo scare maze. I have a terror maze. <laughs> what are you talking about? It does make it sound this very is, cute. You just made it. You just totally screwed it up. Um, but yeah, he was like, you know, it's not a boo scare maze. I'm like, yes, it is. Because here's the, and there's nothing wrong with a boo scare maze. I love boo scare mazes. I go to them all the time. The idea is that it's a maze and around every corner, every turn, there is another scare. You know, you, you, you know the layout. Yeah. You know, it's more like, when you're in it, the atmosphere, the sound effects, the acting, the story is supposed to take you out of it to the point where you really don't know what's going to happen next. That's what's so much fun about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've gotten to the point where I know where things are happening. What's this is going to happen here? That's going to happen there. I still love it. Yeah, it's still awesome. And when I get surprised in the maze, I like last year at Universal Studios, there were a few surprises I did not see coming, and I was just. Jumping up and down with this, I, I, I was and, so and you can uh, remember because I think I went on most things there last year. I did year. everything there last year four times. <laughs> I, I went with Shar, and she made me do everything four times. <gasps> oh, oh cool. Shar! If you watch the documentary, Shar is just the best. 
she's the, a well, like a, just a veteran scare actor. Who, you know, you know, I don't think too much about the lower thirds, and you know, when it, to describe someone in the documentary, it's their name in the lower thirds. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm racking my brain. It was more like. Well, my favorite oh my was God, my, f- my favorite was Craig. Not, not a haunt. not a haunt fan. It just seems crazy to me that someone's purposely scaring themselves uh, and paying money to do it. So for Shar, I wanted to say legendary scare actor because you know she wasn't getting the respect in the haunt community that I that I know she deserved. It was 1970. Four, I did my first home haunt. We had a bucket of grapes, and as they're squeezing it, we'd say, they're eyeballs, and they would scream. Nowadays, you have to waterboard them, you have to shove them, you have to get in their face. We never thought about doing anything like that back in the old days when I started haunting. Because what I know, I interviewed tons of people, and even before I was doing this, I was talking to scare actors all, all around the world, just because I'm a haunt nerd, this is what I do. But she's the first to ever act in every single style of haunt that currently exists. So from hay rides to home haunts, to theme parks, to Delusion, the interactive haunt play, to Blackout, mm-hmm. she worked in Blackout. To, she, so she's done everything from the most ex- really extreme stuff to the most traditional. And to me that's like, she's like the Neil Armstrong of haunting. <laughs> yeah. Like She's the first, there'll be a second. She's <laughs> the yeah. first and I, once you start talking to her, there's oh no gosh. way you just you, have, you fall in love. Once I have my makeup fully applied, I go over to the mirror and I just look at the mirror. As I become the monster, I start letting my true self out, and I come somewhere in the middle and I make a connection. I'm that monster then, and there's no turning back. She just glows from the inside when she talks about haunting, yeah. and God, that's someone who loves what they do. You're gonna love it when you get to meet her because. She is one of those people that will not let you down. Exactly how she is in the film is exactly how she is. She's I love just this it. awesome person who lives for scaring people. And the problem with the documentary is that you have to stop. And it kills me that she's continuing to do all these amazing things. I love that she's doing amazing things. But she's like um, this kind of scare actor, coach, and mentor at the 17th Door Hunt. And I just watched her lead a scare school, teaching them how to, the right way to scare. And it was so inspiring, and it was so great. I had like my cell phone, and I'm like, I'm filming all of this. And I, <laughs> I, I filmed her whole class, and I was so inspired. And the people that were there were getting really inspired, and they were. And it's just so cool to watch how she's getting people ready to scare people and ready to care about the people that they're scaring. That's what I was going to bring up next is, you know, we talked a little bit about how people feel when they go through a haunt, but I think what's equally interesting is how the people who are doing the scaring, how they feel about their relationship with people who come through the haunts. Mm -hmm. Because it's a two-way thing. When When you're working one person, and they're screaming, you're having for that split second a little relationship with them. There's like a little connection between the monster and the human. I was gonna do one interview with her. She said that and I just, something lit up in my brain. I was like, oh my God, I have to know everything about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you're not done. Your part yeah. just got bigger and I need to know <laughs> more. Uh, because she does say, look, there's people that go into a maze that you know, they're really genuinely terrified. Well, I want them to have the best experience they could possibly have. There's other people out there that have done every hunt ever, and they want you to challenge them. They want you to really get them in a different way. And there's other people who should never have gone in there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> They're drunk out of their minds. They're aggressive anyway. They don't want to look like a wimp in front of their girlfriend. They're going to do something crazy in there, and they shouldn't have been there at all. Craig, not a hunt fan. Yes. <laughs> so he's the one that's more like in the, he probably shouldn't be there. He's not a mean guy. He's such a nice guy. Mm-hmm. So I met Craig because I went to my nephew's birthday party. And Craig walks up and he's a big, big guy. I don't even know. Like he's like a giant. And I'm like looking up at him and he's like, I hear you're doing a <laughs> documentary about haunted houses <laughs> for Halloween. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, uh, what do you think of that? Well, I'm not a haunt fan. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't even get his name yet. I was like, you're not a haunt fan. I'm like, what's your name? Craig. I'm like, Craig, not a haunt fan. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Like, I need, like, tell me why you don't like haunts. He's like, then he tells me the story. 
It's so funny. It's a, <laughs> it's so terrible, but it's so funny. It's a longer story too because it's basically I won't get the whole thing, but he went to Not Scary Farm with his wife, it was his girlfriend at the time. She loves going to haunts. I've actually, when I met his wife, I was like, oh my god, I've run into you at like so many haunts. You're like, <laughs> I know, I know, I see you at every haunt. She goes to every haunt, and he does not. It's a different kind of haunt widow, and. <laughs> He went through a haunted not scary farm and the monster pops out and then he he smacked the monster right in the face. It was like a, re, a reflex. The zombie comes up to me and s- says, sir, please don't hit the monster. Yeah. And then, goes, and then I look and it's, it's a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I like when he goes, not my proudest moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's> yeah. Like, <laughs> That was I such a good that. moment. He oh really, it took me three months to convince him to let me. He's like, people oh, are going to see this and so think I'm a funny. monster. No, I'm like, no, not no. at all. It's the most human thing. Yes. And I love it. No, you totally, <laughs> you see this big, huge guy and you go, this is a giant teddy bear. And he has the other thing that, you know, big dudes have, you know, they haven't had to deal with fight or flight where people like me had to deal with fight or flight. I didn't grow up with a giant beard. I'll tell you right now, I got skinny arms, really short, and when someone would threaten me, I would run like crazy. This guy, what happens? If something were to jump out or cause a problem, then he just reacts, and his reaction is gonna be to swing or punch or push, Yeah, because that's what he does. So how do you retrain your brain to go, I'm gonna go through this active terror experience in I will be passive and submit? It's not for everybody. Not everyone can do that. You know, my wife grew up in like the Baltimore punk rock scene. So nothing scares her. <laughs> she's just like, I've, I've been through worse. There's nothing. So for her, she's just looking at the de- decorations and stuff. So it's, it's interesting to see how different people appreciate these experiences. But yeah, last year at Universal, the thing that surprised me. Yeah. The... The jigsaw maze. I love the saw maze, yeah. I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed the saw maze. And it was just fun to see the actors and the different torture in- implements, the like screaming for help. Head. The guy with the head underwater and the, yeah, the doll. Yeah, the, the, the head underwater. His head's underwater sure. and he's like, blah, 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 and you're like, how, <laughs> how is it? And of course, there's a bit of a line, there's a bit of weight, and he's got to keep dying over and over again. But I'm yeah. like, this is amazing. <laughs> but they had that scare at the end where it was the people being with the buckets on their head being dragged to the wall. Mm-hmm. And as you got to the wall, then the saw blades popped out and then air spritzers sprayed you in the face. That <laughs> was such a great surprise. That would, I did not see that coming. I, knew, I thought in my mind, there's no way saws will pop out of the wall like the movie. Didn't even think of And it happened. The um, Ash versus Evil Dead maze. Yeah, I did was, that one twice, yeah. That was incredible because they actually had scares that were funny. You know, there were some people online in like little haunt groups that were really mad. Like, <laughs> of course. Ash isn't supposed to scare. He's supposed to be the hero. The only scary part should be the monsters. I was like, okay, shut up. <laughs> now, I do remember, I think there was video footage of me going through the maze. And when I get scared by Ash, I'm like, come on, you're supposed to be the good guy. <laughs> yeah. That's what's the best part. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Like, number one, he's the kind of good guy that would scare anybody anyway. Yeah, fuck it. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the problem good guy. You know, he's the anti hero good guy. But when he would leap out with the shotgun and fire the shotgun or the chainsaw would come out and then he'd say groovy. It was like, (laughs) so he just scared me. He made me laugh. And then the real scare got me on top of that. Mm -hmm. So it's incredible. I mean, like Not Scary Farm last year had uh, really last year for Not Scary Farm and Universal. I thought that was their best years, in my opinion. I've I've never missed a year. And Not Scary Farm, man, that whole... um, did you do Knott's last I year? I didn't. I've never been to Knott's Scary Farm. Oh, man. See, Knott's is like, it's like the summer camp of haunting. Is it IP or is it? <laughs> no. Okay, that's what they I thought. They do not it's like have. original. They, a long time ago, they did. They, ha- they had like the grudge. Oh, And oh, Sam wow. Raimi brought them the grudge because he's like, I, he loves not, not Scary Farm. <laughs> they don't they, have a Snoopy haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I know they got Snoopy running around at Knott's. <laughs> no, but Camp Snoopy is really creepy because they, they fog <laughs> it out. And, you're like, you're go, <laughs> oh, yeah. and you go through there and they have monsters like waiting to scare you in Camp Snoopy. <laughs> That's like, amazing. What's so cool about Knott's is, look, they innovated a lot of this stuff. Like they created scare zones. They created sliders. 
So wait, what are I know scare zones, which are like not rides; they're just kind of areas of An the area park where they you, scare you. Yeah, you know what, what slider? No, are the people that? that actually slide on the ground. Oh, after you, there's you. footage of that in the dive. yeah, I'm right on rollerblades. So what they have is like it's not quite rollerblades. What they're what they're wearing is on the, they have these knee pads, and un, on top of the knee pads, they've got like this kind of metallic flint. Ooh. So the idea is it's going to spark yeah. while they slide, and That's they have so cool. these steel toe tipped shoes. So what they're doing is they don't. They don't have wheels. They're running, and then they're sliding, and they have gloves that are clicky gloves. They have, like, metal pieces on all throughout the gloves and on the palms so they can slide on the ground. So <laughs> even if they're not sliding, they just click their gloves. That's already scary. Mm-hmm. That's already good. And if you've ever – so when, when you go to Not Scary Farm, what's so cool is they have an area there, um, the Old West area, Ghost Town, and they fog that out, and there's almost no light. And you can hear them sliding towards you, and they're screaming. Oh, they're going, man. and they'll slide like three at a time all around you. <laughs> and it's such a it's such a rush. They come up with really creative mazes, and it's all make believe. Like they made it up out of nothing. Like John Murdy at Universal, he's done that. You know, he's done some great mazes like um, Clowns 3D. That was like an ice cream clown uh, truck people that were coming after you. He did one that was the asylum based on a, uh, a screenplay for a movie he wrote that never got made. <laughs> oh and my God. it was so scary. <laughs> and it was one of my favorite bad guys of all time in a haunt, Poo Boy. <laughs> You went through a bunch of clotheslines with dirty underwear. Oh, it smelled no. like poo. Oh, no. You see on the wall, it smears, <laughs> smeared poo boy on the wall. Damn it, poo No, boy. this is the second podcast in a Dude. row we've had to talk about someone writing stuff with their own poop. That's really? like, <laughs> I think that's a first in podcast history. That's, uh, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm glad I was num- <laughs> number two. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's it. I have to see ya. Yeah, then you got, went around a corner, and this giant guy... He is just wearing a dirty diaper, <laughs> no. and he has poo smeared all over his hands, and he looks like a giant baby man, oh and my. he <laughs> leaps out at you, waving his this hands. This was at Universal? Yes. It's a family company. Oh, my. Well, there was another guy pinned to a wall with syringes, and he's, <laughs> his flesh were pinned, was pinned to the wall, oh and he's leaning God. forward. Dude, he, I mean, he, La Llorona, and his La Llorona was incredibly scary. Oh, that's going to be a move. People always try to make that in the movie. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. well, it's, a, it's a folklore. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's one of the, it's a creepy story, but that maze in particular, they did it two years in a row. It's the one where you see footage of online where you see the, uh, someone, a woman being swallowed up by a giant uh, um, person eating the person in bed. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And they're being swallowed into there. They did like a different take on that with the Freddy one last year, but yeah. it's not quite the same. Because the Freddy one was ma- Yeah, the Freddy mm-hmm. one, but this was like a massive, massive thing with a real person getting sliding into it screaming. Mm. There's stuff on that online that's so great. So Murdy is fantastic at original storytelling. Knots, that's, that's what they have. So John Cook, incredible haunter there, he created some of my favorite ones. So he, he did this one um, called The Dark Ride. And then last year, I think it's one of the most original haunts I've been to at a theme park in, in so long. It was such a, it was so cool because it was basically like a broken down theme park ride. That's what I, I, I was intrigued by just the name. Because yeah. yeah, a dark ride, if you're a theme park nerd, like I am, I'm just super into theme parks in general, is like the, you think of It's a Small World or Peter Pan where it's in a building and there's little sets and you're moving kind of slow. That is such a good yeah. Setting. Imagine imagine if you're like a Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, or mm-hmm. you know, more, you know, more like a or like a Small World or whatever, where you're. I was, immediately I went for like Mr. Toad. I'm like, no, White, no, yeah. because you're too close to the sunlight. You know your way out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, so one that's a little bit deeper. Yeah, small World, you get deep in. You there. get deep yeah. in there. You Haunted, no Ma- to... Haunted Mansion is a good. Sure. Oh, like yeah. that's a yeah. But the thing is, it's the idea is you're walking in. The the carts are broken down, and you're walking on the track. And the soundtrack keeps slowing down, and they have giant animatronics that are slowing down, and they're really awesome animatronics. Like, they have like a wizard and a dragon. It's like, you know, you shall not pass. <laughs> and like the dragon's wings. And then you're going in and out of the break rooms. So you see the security cameras and the coffee. 
and you're going around, and then there's all these creepy characters all wandering around the ride in between the animatronics, and it was brilliant. That's so cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got lots of things I want to talk about. Okay. First, oh. we do have to talk about yes. this week's sponsor. Because you know it's really scary, getting bad sleep. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, friggin' waterboard me in the dark all day long, but let me get a good night's sleep afterward at least. And you can do that with Casper, Casper mattresses. mattresses. Guys, we got a Casper Dude, mattress. Dude, they sent us a mattress. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I don't even know if we need to even look at our, our Casper notes, dude, because I could talk about Casper for a while. Yeah, this yeah. is life changing. Yeah. I've always I've always heard uh, don't skimp on anything that goes between your body and the ground. So like shoes, shoes. or mattresses. Your office chair. Sure, that too. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but definitely mattresses. You're going to sleep so much. Oh my God. And I'm, I'm not <laughs> exaggerating. Like... I've been getting such better sleep. Yeah. I, I sleep poorly often just mm-hmm. because yeah, you do. I have a hard time falling asleep. I think I'm just an anxious sleeper. And that makes me have a hard time sleep. Yeah. Because yep. It's been so much better. And it's it crazy because it showed up at our apartment in this box. Just this little box. Yeah, yeah. It just shows up like it was delivered straight to our door in just a little box. And uh, we tore it open. And I was expecting a situation where it's like you got to like let it you inflate wait overnight. For a day. No, man. I unwrapped that bitch. It was ready to sleep on right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to use that language in an it's ad, fine. but I hope it's okay. Your your mattress is named after a ghost. It should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, you know, maybe you'll appreciate this as a as a politically minded man. All designed, developed, and assembled in the United States. That's pretty cool. Ooh. That is cool. Yeah. Like Whoa, that for is real. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, that Absolutely. is. So you don't have to lose sleep on how this bed was made. Oh exactly. yeah, you're getting into it. I like it. that. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I was saying earlier. You sleep a lot. You spend a third of your life sleeping if you're getting enough sleep. I'd, I'd probably spend more like a quarter of my life sleeping, <laughs> and then I'll have less of it in the end. But uh, avoid that by getting a Casper mattress and getting that nice sleep all that time. Yeah, and if you if you hate it, if you get it and you hate it, which you won't, but if you do, hassle for your turns. Like, yeah, no problem. Dude. They'll just take it back. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll grab it for you. Yeah. It's so, hassle-free. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's free shipping. Like, you know, shipping's done by weight. And mattresses weigh a lot. Yeah. But they'll take care of it for you. <laughs> and, sorry, I just want to make sure we hit the appropriate number of bullet points and make sure that we don't get in trouble for the sad just... where I swore and I feel kind of bad. <laughs> I hope it's okay. It's a Casper, bitch. We got bitch. two excited. <laughs> yeah, it's Casper. <laughs> With a little that. quote bubble coming out of the ghost. Yeah, yeah, Casper's like, it's yeah. Casper, bitch. <laughs> oh, man, we probably shouldn't even be comparing it to the ghost, oh, but that's okay. No. Uh, you get 100 nights risk-free, and if you don't like that, uh, like I said, you can you can return it. Yeah, so if, yeah, if you do, do want to do the 100-night trial, if you do want to get a Casper, you can get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash dead meat all one word slash dead meat you know what there's a giant box here that says do not address the following under any circumstances i don't see the ghost i don't see i don't see the ghost we're good good. got away with it yeah that's casper uh that's casper.com slash dead meat go get that mattress dude (laughs) this is the most off the rails ad i think (laughs) but it's sincere man we fucking love that mattress. yeah we we really really do it's also this is even on the bullet points. I was going to talk about this really quick. It's aerated so that because I I tend to warm to, uh, to run warm when I'm sleeping. It's like the mattress has like these little layers. Uh, hon, that's bullet point number five. Well, you fucking chill. Oh no. But no, it's true. She sweats less. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I'll be honest about that. <laughs> it's so much better. It's dude. great. Casper.com slash meat. Go get it. <laughs> you know what's scary is waking up and I'm just like a swamp monster in the bed. I'm so glad you sweat less. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad too. Because That's I'm good. in the bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a trip. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, one that I got a couple of things to bring up first, just real briefly is, uh, I think about how a lot of the people who watch 
Dead Meat or listening to the podcast or anything, they're not as familiar with the film industry as we are. I mean, you made a documentary. We went to film school and, you know, we watch a lot of movies and we, we work in L.A. where we're surrounded by this shit. So a lot of people who watch us don't realize maybe the uh, specific jobs that go into it or even that there are, like, filmmakers who are known for certain things and, like, the creative uh, tissue between, like, oh, this person did that so you can see that kind of influence in this other movie they did. That's how I feel talking about haunts. I didn't realize that there were people known for them and known for like, like, because you said that uh, the same person who did Castle Rock did Blackout. Right. It's like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I, I, you don't think about like the craftsmanship and the the artistry involved. And I feel like it's always good to remember like this stuff just doesn't come out of nowhere. There are people behind them doing these things and yeah. like it's so cool to learn about that was so when you were talking about kind of doing research into trying to understand when the haunt industry and when the, like just halloween period when the most money is spent and what that kind of correlates to and that was probably research you had to just kind of infer on your own because i'm sure there's not like national you know? retail federation yeah. National Retail Federation, <laughs> they do the work for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the National Retail Federation, uh, <laughs> I love them. I think they're amazing. Um, they actually add up um, and tell you how much money is spent during different holidays, and they, they get really specific. Okay. Like, like the, they'll tell you how much people spend on costumes for their dogs. Oh um, <laughs> but you can find out things about how money's been spent on your pets over time. Oh, cool. Because this... These studies tell us a lot about being a, the American experience. Yeah. yeah. It says a lot about society. It says a lot about when, uh, trends in spending money. It says a lot about everything. It's, yeah. It's, it's a lot about people. And I bring up the, the, the economic aspect because we kind of talk about that a lot just in general in the podcast and what's going on in the horror film industry. And I just didn't, it didn't even occur to me that you could also, yeah, look at haunts and what's going on within the haunt community. What's, what kind of style is popular? Oh yeah. You know, what kind of experience is popular? What people are spending money on that you can also kind of correlate that to what's going on because yeah, in the end, like you said, it's an art form and yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. And, and seeing like watching your documentary and seeing uh, these haunts get constructed from the ground up. Oh it's God. like, oh, man, just the work and planning oh, and it's crazy. passion that goes into it. It's, it's oh, yeah. great. Oh, when you're talking about the trends, though, it's so crazy because the 90s, you know, we're not having like a major war in the 90s. What do we have? We have scream. Mm -hmm. We have horror comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have Vietnam, we have Last House on the Left. You know, when we have you know, the 80s, and there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear about a lot of different things coming at us. And what do we have? We have, you know, Freddy Krueger. We have, you know, it's like Freddy and Jason. They're all getting so popular then, like all the big franchises. And when we're, you know, in a terrifying war on terror, what do we have? You know, we have these crazy anxiety terror films, you know, where you have like Saw and you have Hostel. You know, so it's um, it's fascinating to see these things play out. It's interesting to see the purge play out, the way it's played out. Yeah, it's fascinating to see movies that kind of capture the anxiety of the moment, without being so literal. That's the thing that horror has on drama. Like if someone says, "Hey, I got a great drama about how terrible things are nowadays." Would you like to look at it? It's like, no, leave me alone. <laughs> Get your Oscar and go away. I don't want this. I don't want to look at it. I just don't want to look at it. To be fair, the Purge movies have gotten pretty uh, overt with their their like message. <laughs> but sure, but there's still a lot of fun. Yeah, there's still a lot of fun. <laughs> it's like you know, sci-fi and horror. They do such a good job of letting you face your fears, and escape them at the same time. Yeah. You know, that's what haunts do so well. That's the other side of it that's so much fun. It's like that immersive interactive theater where you can confront the most frightening thing to you, escape it, and also have a distance from it because there was some kind of fantasy. Yeah, there was you some can go home imagined. again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, but there's a lot more of these extreme haunts yeah. that really blur the line between simulation and true terror so so let's let's finally explain oh, fully yeah, we, teased it. we teased it so much <laughs> so yeah if you're only familiar with the boo scares 
there you may not be aware that there are these extreme haunts. And when when would you say they started? Uh, Mid two thousands around. Yeah, I okay. mean, like, really, blackout started in two thousand nine, and was that like the first big one at least? Yeah, there's okay. there were other experimental theater experiences where mm-hmm. things like this could happen to you, but this is the first that said they were a haunted house. And it's and two thousand nine, mm-hmm. and that's like post. I mean, I that's post economic crash. Sure, you know? yeah, I think that well, makes cause, sense because two thousand eight. During the financial meltdown, that's when haunts and horror even made more money than it did in 2001. September 11th, thoughts definitely arose at knots. Are people gonna be in the mood for Halloween? And the guests flooded the gates. The park sold out. Yeah. So when the market, everything's crashing, there's no money. What money people had, they put it right into horror Yeah. to escape and freak out. And then 2009, blackout saying, we got naked people are going to waterboard you here. Exactly. So yeah, <laughs> and so people showed up. Uh, so these extreme haunts are ha- one of the things that um, I would always try to say to you when uh, in, in pertaining to haunts, and one of the things that gets me through them is the same kind of mentality I have riding a theme park ride. In that, yes, it'll be scary, but nothing can happen to me. Like this ride is safe, or else it wouldn't be a ride. And this this walkthrough is safe, or else it wouldn't be a walk. Like no one's gonna touch me. Like they can scare me, but they they can't touch me. And so it's not a fucking big deal. I'll just go through this maze. With these extreme ones, that's different. Oh yeah, they're and gonna th- touch you. Yeah. So this is for people who maybe had my mindset and were turned off because of that safety, and who were like, "But no, I want to get scared." Because uh, you mentioned earlier when you go through through haunts that you like know the layout. You walk through and you're like, there's going to be something there. There's going to be, and that's me when I walk through. I'm not nearly as experienced as you, but I still just like know how scares are constructed. So I can right. walk in and be like, oh, there's going to be a guy popping out of there. There he is. That was good job, guy. Great. Uh, and so so it's those moments where I get genuinely surprised and scared that are truly awesome. Sure. But it, these extreme things, which I have not done, <laughs> uh, sound like they really break down that, that safety barrier uh, because they can touch you. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> there's, there's extreme, and then there's immersive theater. Immersive theater, they can touch you also. Okay. And immersive theater, it's... Um, it's not as aggressive as an extreme haunt. Immersive theater, you it's although depending on who you are, it can be you can really freak out. Like the um, the tension experience. Uh, so Darren Bowsman, uh, yeah, yeah, so director of uh, Saw, Saw two, three, two, three, and four. four. Yep. Boom, <laughs> you got it. I like it. Um, so he also created the tension experience, and the tension experience. Did you hear about that one? Mm-mm. Okay, so this was a thing that first existed online where you it was like a cult it was like a really strange cult that you had to join by saying these different phrases and then you had a post on your facebook page and then they would interact with you then you would get phone calls our friend brianna did that i think it might i think be it's the exact same thing. exact thing because she was, was telling a british that. guy gone well they use different voices sure, yeah, they yeah, use yeah. different voices so maybe yeah but <laughs> they there was a time when i was calling them <laughs> and he was using a voice disguiser when he's talking to me. And I was I was just trying to set up an interview. That's it. And he was just like, well, listen. And I'm like, no, come on. I don't need it. I don't need it. Just tell me if we're going to do the interview. And okay, we're going to do the voice again. And he's like, I'll talk to you at three in the morning. I'm like, great, great. Another three in the morning phone call. And it was like, and one time he was in the car with his kids. So it was funny because he was talking to me. And then all of a sudden you heard, Daddy, I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, I got to go. <laughs> like, okay, a lot less scary. Um, so what they did, though, is they created this thing. It was a giant buildup that went on for months. And then you got an invitation to actually go to the place. And this is exactly what yeah. she okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, that, so the tension experience, and they, they were very hands-on mm-hmm. and did a lot of crazy things. But... No matter how intense and how frightening it got, you can tell that you were in the hands of like really good people. Like this is a great like when you watch a crazy Wes Craven movie or a John Carpenter film, you can always, no matter how insane it gets, you know, it's coming from a someone with, with a really good heart. Yeah, you know they mm-hmm. they're not trying to scar you for life; they're just trying to scare the hell out of you. And so the next year, he did something called the Lust Experience, and which is more like a um, eyes wide shut party. <laughs> oh, okay, gone even weirder. <laughs> And then um, now he's doing something called Theater Macabre, which it's supposed to, I, 
I'm terrible with French. The only way I can do it is if I sound like a sen- sexy French lady. It's a Grand Guignon <laughs> style theater. <laughs> Look, I listened to a language tape you know, on my way to France once, and I was listening to it. And it was like, Je Voudre, Café au lait. That was the voice that was used. Yeah. So that's my curse. <laughs> that's I, yeah, I was that's in France, and I really did say, <laughs> Je Voudre, Café au lait. And like, oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> you know, I wanted the coffee and milk. But um, <laughs> so he's, in, in, he's also going to be doing a year round version of um, Lust Experience in, in Vegas. Um, so he, he's just doing all kinds of amazing things. Oh, so cool. Immersive theater. You've got your Bowsmans, you've got your John Braver, who's kind of like, I feel like, the, is the Spielberg in that area, because it's very reminiscent of like a Spielberg movie, the way he does delusion. Um, so there's a lot of, there's uh, Creep LA. Um, they also do The Willows. Um, so Creep LA this year will be, um, th- you just read the descriptions. It's so much fun, because they tell you, it's not a haunt, but it's like, okay, yeah. But you have to say that. Because it is. And <laughs> it's immersive theater, and it's in the haunt world, but it, it's very much, you're going to be crawling and climbing and exploring. And when you're doing things like that, y- you just get caught up in the moment, so anything can scare you at mm-hmm. that point, because you get so, po- they did the lore experience last year. Remember the lore, you know the lore oh, podcast? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they, oh, that, was, yeah. that turned into an Amazon yep. show. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. then they turned that into an experience. You went through the different lore stories. Awesome. So, that's your immersive theater, you know, interactive storytelling, choose your own adventure style, personalized. That sounds great. Super I, cool. I would, yeah. I think I would really enjoy it. You would. That. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's basically what theater should be. Get mm. up out of the seats. And the, is and there explore. a bit of an escape room element to it? Or Depending no? on the show. Okay. Yeah, some, yeah. some do. Some, we love escape rooms. Sometimes mm-hmm. you got to find a key. Sometimes you got to find something. Um, that was another one Josh Randall did. Um, he did a strange uh, experience for the the Strangers sequel. Ooh, oh, um, oh pray at night. Yeah, they yeah. had the trailer park. And oh, you went, that's, that's awesome! So fun. That's it was so setting. scary. It was so scary because <laughs> I really got scared. Um, you you're walking through the trailer park, and all of a sudden, this woman goes, "Come with me! Come with me!" And as she's saying that, the guy is right behind her. Oh god! And then we get inside, and then we have to slide the sliding door shut, and he's trying to open it, and you're pulling it back and forth until you can lock it. Okay, scary stuff. I love <laughs> immersive that's, theater. Yeah, that's, that's total so cool. immersive theater. Extreme haunts are where the gloves come off, yeah. and it's like, no, we're gonna give you more of an experience that's like, um, that's like the original Strangers. They're gonna grab <laughs> yes, that, yeah. right? And there's even been one that that um, was in Big Bear where it was like that, where you were there. It was eight hours in, oh in a God. cabin in Big Bear, and someone started knocking on the door, and then the power gets cut, and there's people underneath you and around you and it just got crazy that and crazier. That is kind of cool actually. The idea yeah. that like you're put in a house where it's you're in a home invasion yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. And, that, till, and then they're going to tie you up. They're going to oh. gag you. See like they're gonna, that's crazy. Yeah. You're going to get pulled off into the woods. You know, there's I've seen some that were um that are really wild like that and that, that are even crazier. So the idea with an extreme hunt is you're now going to be in one of those extreme horror movies, the ones that you watch that you freak out when you watch them, but that are also so realistic that you're kind of like, oh my God, this feels like a, it could be a snuff film. It's like Last House. Is, yeah. Or, yeah. There's that yeah. whole genre of extreme yeah. horror, like, you know, that lack of a better word people call torture porn, but mm-hmm. where they go into such dark places. And now there's a, there, there are some that do that, that are around here, like, um, Frickling Brothers have the victim experience in Vegas. Um, Cracked is now in the UK. Um, but the most extreme, the most horrific, and the most terrifying thing of all time is McKamey Manor. Now, I don't like saying that like that because then it immediately it makes someone it goes, sound, oh, I gotta Let's try it. Go. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. what happens? Like, people kept telling me, this guy is telling people, it's the most terrifying thing in the world. You don't want to do this. And then people go anyway. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. what it's was like, the advertising campaign for Evil Dead? Exactly, yeah. yeah. The people are always asking, what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Because I want to go see it. But like, go watch this documentary. Yeah, it, this is not like a, oh man, it's it scared me so much. It was, it, this is like a, no, really don't, because... You see people like, go y- inward when they get really scared. Oh my God. When people get yeah. really, really, really scared, it's not... 
when they're having fun, it's not it's fun. screaming, right? It's yeah. like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God, that was crazy. You know, that's what happens. When it's so extreme that it's crossed a line and then you see people just kind of glaze over. Yeah. There's a couple times where you see that in the movie. It kind of makes me mad because I was done there. No, we're not gonna let you quit. No. <laughs> <laughs> like that's when I wish that there was a safe word because I was so done. I remember that feeling and it was horrible. The Caney Manor does not have a safe word. That's just weak. So maybe people can visualize what mm -hmm. this thing looks like. It's a literal, it is a maze set up in his yard. Yeah, but it's like, like one room was all steel. Like the floor, the walls, the ceiling, it was all steel. Other rooms, they had all these really wild designs. Some of the robots, the animatronics that were in there were, there was one that was in there that was worth $30,000. There were two that were worth twenty. There were many that were worth ten. I mean, the guy spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building this thing. Yeah, and it's built in such a way where, if you're not using a certain part, you can actually push the walls, and then they can flatten the other areas, and you have more room in a different room. It was real, and even that functionality of it was really creepy. And it smelled, it smelled so bad. <sighs> it smelled so bad. It looks like it. Like he smells. has like fake smells too, like rotting corpse smell and stuff, and he'll just take it and like spray way too much of it. But then other people are going through it. They're peeing themselves. They're throwing up. What Russ wants to do is he wants to find the perfect cast members for his horror movie. I probably wouldn't do The Haunt if, if I wasn't able to film it because I want the world to see what I'm doing. The guests are the actors. They are my stars. And he wants to have like a real life horror movie. Before he was putting it on YouTube, he would edit these things together and then months later, mail someone the DVD. Oh my God, it's like a creepy pasta. Yeah. This is totally, yeah. <laughs> this is totally like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's even weirder because it's, this is real, this yeah. is real. So he would send, I talked to some guys that were like, oh, I had this one great interview, it was so interesting. This guy was like, um, he said, I went through the experience, it was totally insane. I couldn't believe it. And then three months later, I get an envelope that's soaked in blood. Oh God. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? And I opened it up and it had like a sticker with a smiley face that was like, oh, we had so much fun with you. What? You're welcome back anytime you want. Um, enjoy. And he goes, and I put it on. It was like, you know, a five hour movie of me freaking out. And I was like, what the hell is this? Oh my what is God. this? So what he's filming, he has a, and I'm watching his videos too. They look like, it looked like a Rob Zombie movie being yes. pro projected on the Titanic while it's going down. Like it's 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 because a Rob Zombie movie, you still know it's a movie. There's still like this whole, but there's a layer of oh my god, the widening. He, he, it's like a it, fish eye it angle. Feel, the whole it time. feels like you shouldn't be watching it. Yes, it's yeah, so yes, weird. that's yeah. why. And, and it's it look, feels like and, a and, fucking like early two thousands like house music video. Oh my god, like an Apex oh. Twin video. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it feels like for sure. Yeah, yeah it feels. I mean, there's definitely a lot of, to me, a lot of stuff reminiscent of House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm -hmm. And he keeps saying that he's never seen that movie. <laughs> now, I don't know if I believe it, but when I, I saw his movie collection and I was like, it's all noir films and Hitchcock and <laughs> those are his heroes. You know, oh he, he does not like, you know, crazy horror films. He just likes making them. Yeah. And so one of the things I wanted to see was I wanted to see what it was look like, what it looked like while he's filming. Like what is this? What is his face doing? What is he wearing? What is what? What's his camera? Because he has like a, a, a still camera in one hand, the video camera in the other, blasting with lights. And when I look at the video too, you see a spotlight on somebody, and you're like, how can this even be scary? There's a giant spotlight. It's terrifying because you're in the dark and there's a giant spotlight mm, blinding yeah. you, and you only hear his voice from behind the camera while other people are around you and he's directing them and you can't see what he's doing because you cannot see him. Yeah. He sees himself more of a, as a director than anything else. He kept talking about the shots, man. He was oh like, gotta get God. the shots, anything for the shots. Look, some of his videos have 8 million, 10 million views. You know? Yeah, so do mine and I'm not fucking torturing <laughs> yeah. people. I hear you, dude. Wait, and just to be clear, all these other extreme places we've been talking about have safe words, They right? all do. The only thing that exists that doesn't have a safe word is McKamey Manor. Everywhere else, there's a way out. Blackout, there's a way out. 
Yeah. You know, so if you can't take it, just say the Say the safe word. Get out. I met someone who did the safe word in 10 seconds. Yeah. She was so scared. She was so built up to her, and she had to do it right away. And this is what we talked about earlier. It, it's, it feels very important to, to have that option. It's because, empowering. Yeah. yeah. And also, yeah, like some people overestimate what they can, they're capable of. You and know? no one knows. You don't know what's going on in my mind. Mm-hmm. You don't know what a panic attack looks like on me. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it looks like on you. When you say you've had enough... And I'm thinking, oh, but it's nothing compared to what I could handle. It's really, when it comes down to it, it's it's so much about consent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you need to have consent in order to have this be an experience that's not going to be traumatizing. That's true with anything in life. I mean, that was the thing with with Blackout. When I asked him, what do you look for in a scare actor? He was like, well, I look for someone with a lot of empathy. I want to find someone that really cares. Mm -hmm. This is their, this is... Acting, it's a simulation, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. but not McKamey Manor. Not McKamey Manor, they're looking for the real deal. It's physically abusing the people, even though they say they're not, and they're fine afterwards. You know, when a cat plays with a mouse, when the mouse is dead, there's no more fun in it. That's how I like to haunt. I'm never gonna put somebody in a position where they can't get away. He has that thing called Mother's Room. Yeah, I saw you mention this in a few comments what on the, the AMA. What the fuck is that? What is it? I don't know if I got to that in the AMA. Because you said that you left. You like get couldn't out. handle it. So what's Mother's Room, dude? What's Mother's Room, man? What's Mother's Room? I got to tell you about what happened to Christina Buster. Because sure. we won't forget Mother's Room. I, <laughs> I'll never forget it. I wish I could. I wish I could forget Mother's <gasps> Room. God. Oh, man. Too disgusting. Too horrific. <laughs> Fuck. It's in the movie for a second. Um, so Christina flew in from Kuwait. She's an American contract worker. So she flew, what, 19 hours to go to McKamey Manor. She gets like a month or so off from work every year. So she just she does it during Halloween to do as many haunts as possible. And she really wanted to do McKamey Manor. And she kept Skyping with him. And she's going through it. She went with a couple that were there from England. And they were there for their honeymoon. Oh, no. And I was like, why are you doing this? I have honestly forgotten every reason that I may have thought this was a good idea at the time. He proposed at Halloween Horror Nights. We thought this would be so great. Like, this is very different from Halloween Horror Nights. Like, yeah, but we want to see what we can handle. And I'm like, all right. So it's a group of three. They get to the waiver part, and the lady from England is like, I don't know if I want to sign this. I don't even know if I want to. Then... Russ got so mad. He's like, you're derailing the whole thing. Oh, no. (laughs) Okay. We're inside the haunt now. And Christina's in an area where Russ is interviewing her. He's talking to her. She's already been through a bunch of different things. And at one point, she, there were several times where she's like, I got to get out of here. And she just, she wasn't really freaking out. I mean, we in the inside, she probably was out of her mind freaking out. But on the outside, she was just like, I got to get out of here. And Russ goes, oh, you just got here. There's no way. Then there's a part. She's on her own. I'm with Russ and her. I'm filming Russ while Russ is filming her. And she just goes into shock. And that I'd never seen someone's face just go into shock, but I was like, that's that's someone who just went into shock right there. I said, Russ, you have to stop. She went into shock. He's like, did she? Did she really? Are you in shock? Are you really in shock? And he's like taking pictures. Is this what shock looks like? I'm like, okay. I put down the camera. I picked her up, and I took her inside the house and put her on the couch and so she could sit down. And she was not saying anything. She was walking, but her eyes were just in a stare. Yeah. And I just sat there like making sure she's okay. And 30 minutes later, she snapped out of it. She goes, why am I not in the haunt anymore? I was like, whoa, because you went into shock. She went, wait a minute. You took me out? Oh my God. Because I went into shock. This is bullshit. Oh I God. flew 19 hours for this. This is, you got to put me back in there. And I was like, look, I think you need to <laughs> relax for a second and really think about this. Russ comes in and he's like, as nice, he's like, how's it going, baby girl? I'm so, are, are you oh okay? Are you all right? <laughs> and she goes, no, I want to go back in the fucking haunt. He's like, 
And of course, Russ hates swearing more than anything. Really? Yes. He said he mentioned that. He was like, of course, no cussing. And we both were like, okay, dude. At this (laughs) point, we were so done with it. That's what he he describes. He's like, well, blackout, they've crossed a real line. But mine, at least, there's no nudity. There's no swearing. It's yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Oh my, oh my god. god. That's like the that's the main concern. Oh I know god. one other person in life who is like I I hate cussing, but he also he's a piece of shit. Like <laughs> you know I don't know what I don't know what that is. It's okay, like Norman continue. Bates, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, right. If you so if you repress everything, <laughs> yeah, then you have a dead mother upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you have. Some something, something's going on. But we're the, gonna uh, get to mother's rooms. Oh <laughs> no! No! I forgot. <laughs> You know, I don't want it. But the, um, so Russ goes, okay, I'll settle down there. And she, she's like, fuck you, put me back in the haunt. And this time, don't be so easy on me. This is garbage. I didn't fly out from Kuwait for nothing. And he was like, oh, you want the real deal? And I was like, I'm not even filming this. I'm just going, okay, everybody. All right, no, you're not going back in. I'm like, I'm not, not that professional. <laughs> I've not gotten paid to be a documentary filmmaker. I just want, to, I want you to be okay. And she's like, no, stay out of this. And he, he's like, oh, you really want it? She's like, yeah. He's like, oh, we're going we're gonna to bring it if you really do. Oh she's God. like, I do. He's like, fine. And he runs back in the hunt, and then all the sounds start going back on, and all the sound effects, and all the music tracks, and all the, and it's, it's building and building and building, and then the lights in the house start turning off. And then he comes running in and grabs her, puts him, throws her over the sho- his shoulder, and then runs back inside. She does four more hours. Oh my god! It was <sighs> the craziest shit. There was a, there was a thing that they had there, that he had, this sixteen-year-old kid build for him, custom made. Oh man, this that's kid, a whole other thing. And that kid was like, he flew in from Texas, and he's obsessed with um, haunted houses and theme park rides. This kid's gonna be like the world's greatest Imagineer one day. Yeah, <laughs> like he's he little do, Tony Baxter. He yeah. can do anything, and wow. what he created, just looking at it, was like this is terrifying. It's out of a Clive Barker nightmare. Oh no! You're, you're <laughs> sitting in these seats, and they have these giant sledgehammers above every seat, and these lights and everything. They strap you in. They put this gas mask on you, and you hear this clock ticking and ticking and ticking, and then the clock is done and then the sledgehammers swing, and they stop just right here. Oh my God. But the second it stops, your mask fills up with this fake blood that's shot through an air hose. And oh. It goes right up your nose. Oh it, my God. It feels like something just hits you in the head, and your eyes water up because it's such an impact. Oh my God. And when they God. take the stuff off, all this fake blood is coming out, and it's all pouring out of their nose. So there, some people think, is my nose broken? She's, blood's pouring out, and she's like, and it's over. It's all finished. She goes, thank you so much. That was incredible. Oh Shaking hands, the whole thing. She got, went back. I think she went back three more times. Holy Man. shit. And loved it. Like, I filmed one guy. He loved it so much. Nothing bothered him. I couldn't put him in the movie because when every time I put him in a cut, Everyone's like, oh, everyone else is a complainer. I'm like, no, no, this guy is just like the Superman of BDSM. He yeah. was like, they put a, a tarantula on his face. He goes, oh, it's a brown recluse. <laughs> I love these guys. They're poisonous. And then they're like, what if we shave half your head? He goes, that'll be weird at work tomorrow. <laughs> and then they. Oh, my God. That's a whole other story. That guy was fantastic. Rudy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love Rudy. But then you did also have uh, some people who, like, watched the footage of themselves that Russ had taken, and they, they, they were seemed angry mad angry. at him for it, having gone through the experience. It was really interesting because those were people that wanted to work at McCamey Manor afterwards. You know, I went through it, so now I want to kind of turn the tables a little bit and put it out on somebody else and see their reaction and see if I can push somebody to their breaking point. So almost everyone that does it then works there. It's almost like the fight it's club like of haunted houses. It's like the cycle of abuse, yeah. but in like a little miniature version That's of it. That's what it felt like it's when- It's so bizarre. When I, I saw in the documentary, some of the guys who had gone through it be like, well, now that I had the the shit done to me, I I'm want to do the to shit do to, someone, to else. someone else. And I was like, no! It's so weird. It, the exact wrong reason for why you want to work in an experience like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like the opposite of empathy. You need to have a safe word. You need a way out. And you also need to go through your own experience or have some of it done to you. Yeah. So you have a context for what other people are feeling. Because that's another big difference between his haunt and other 
extreme hauntses. One, the no safe word. Two, he has not been through his own experience. Won't do it. Would you go through your own? Of course not. Of course not. Because I have common sense. But ju just in case you're like, well, how bad could it be? Just when he was interviewing some people to be his scare actors, I remember one thing that stood out to me was he was like, if they throw up, pick up that throw up put and it put it in, in their, their mouth. mouth. So it's it's depraved it, shit it's, like that. It's being tortured for how many how many hours are people in there? Like, does well, it depend? Okay, so it depends. It, ideally, he wants it to go on. Ideally, for him. He wanted to go on for eight hours. That's uh. as much time as you could sleep on a Casper mattress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, the other thing was that, like, with those other places, there, I would go through and I would have a sense of, like, okay, I trust these people who are doing it to me are, like, actors. They're professionals. But when it got into a little bit about uh, how His Russell... hiring practices. Yeah, and oh. they were, like, ex... <laughs> Skinheads? Yeah, and you know, yeah, just not great background checks yeah, for yeah. people and underage workers, like just kids. Yeah, the kids, I will say this, those kids were the greatest kids and those kids like meant so well. And mm -hmm. I, yes, I really, I, I really love these kids. This kid that. named Freddie, oh, he's the one who said, after school, I, I finished my homework and then I'd be like, Man, I wonder what I'm going to do for McKamey Manor this weekend. He finishes his homework first before he imagines <laughs> what he's going to do. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. You know? But what happens when you, you're in charge of a bunch of kids and you lead the, by example and you say, now go crazy. Mm -hmm. And you encourage them to go crazy. Mm -hmm. They're going to do it because they want to they fit in. They want to make you happy. Kids shouldn't be working there. You know? mm, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and also... You have to be able to trust that the person that's in charge is really in charge to the point where they're a master of storytelling, they're a master of safety. That's the thing with Russ, is that you have to trust that this is the guy that knows when you've had enough. And you've seen him. He, he doesn't want you to have enough. He wants you to go beyond that point. And he even said it. It's taking them to the ledge and tossing them off and laughing as they cruise down that hill at 100 miles an hour. I didn't have to coax this out of him. I said, so what are you looking for? I'm looking to push someone to the edge and then push them off the edge and watch them and laugh as they go down the cliff. It's, Get that shot, yo. Get this shot. Yeah. He only cares yeah. about getting the shot. I don't trust that guy. It is yeah. so creepy. What, like Just listening to him talk about how he feels when he makes people feel like that. It's so weird. It got to a point where during the movie, I turned to James and I was like, at least he's doing this instead of making snuff films. <laughs> Do you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Instead of actually murdering. Him. I know. Uh, <laughs> like, some people are like this, man. You know, he's the, he's so dangerous. I'm like, look, look, look. <laughs> yeah. He has an attraction, you know? And he's telling people, he this is what I'm going to do to you. Yeah. And and then he does it to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, which is already such a crazy... Anyways, yeah. that, that's why I wanted... Um, to film people while they were looking at the footage. Mm -hmm. I had them come over and I showed them the raw footage. So they were sitting there for hours looking at the footage and they hadn't seen it yet. And in their mind, they were going to work at McKamey Manor because that's what you do. You And you'll get that full experience. That's so crazy. And as they were watching it, that's when they realized they are not going to work at McKamey Manor. Yeah. Because they were looking at it and they went, I could never do this to somebody else. Whereas other people looked at it and they were like, oh yeah. That is exactly what I want to do. And to it's like else. those are the people who I don't want doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. you know. But you know, you, you would never go to McCain Manor. Yeah, you would no, never. No. I mean, the amount of times Russ has offered for me to like just go through. Like I filmed it. I was gonna ask if you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, no. Sense. No. <laughs> no. I would never. I would never. I would. I threw up while filming in there. Oh my god. I had a panic attack while filming in there. Are there I, any other ones that you like wouldn't do? No. That's the only I would one. Do, I would do everything else. Well, everything else you can get out of if you don't want. I that. guess maybe is a good time to talk about what exactly Mother's Room is. Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, man. So Mother's Room. <laughs> uh, um, give me a second here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really. Ew. Oh, man. I'm so curious. 
All right. If it doesn't have milk, I'll be disappointed. Okay. Oh, gross. <laughs> so Mother's Room, it's this really t- small space, and they tie you up so that your hands are above your head. And whoever you came with, you know, you're right across from them. And then they bring in, um, like, food. It's like a plate with the, the cover on it, like, mm-hmm. in a, like in one of those movies. Like, and voila, here's yeah. your meal. <laughs> but you know it's going to be terrible. And they go, okay, choose between this one or this one. You choose what you're going to get. And you can't see what it is yet. Mm. Then they show you what it is. And it's 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 always bad. It's like there's just different <laughs> oh, levels God. of terrible. And it's like and it smells so bad too. What it is? Well, it's different things, but one of the, some of the, some of it's like tofu, but tofu that's so much like weird smells have been added to it uh-huh. and then weird dye. So it's like this weird blue creepy thing that just the smell when oh, they pull, when they opened up the lid, yeah. I just started gagging. Cause I was like, Oh, oh my God. God, Oh my God. This smells so, this is too much. And they're, they're like, okay. And then Russ is like playing a game. He was like, all right. Now <laughs> either you eat it or you can make your friend eat it. And then you'll get what's in the other one. I was like, the price is right. So yeah. <laughs> right. It's like and showdown. it totally is like the showcase showdown. And he would have them. Sometimes, a lot of times, they, people would throw the other one under the bus and go, you eat this. And they had to eat it. Now, they made him eat it. They wanted them to to throw up on their friend. Like, that's the goal of this room, oh is to God. eat this stuff, and then you have to throw up on the other person. Yeah. I think oh my God. I'm remembering seeing this. You in see the that for just a moment. Yes, I, I didn't want to. I did not want to linger in that room. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was just like okay, you saw. I okay. You yeah. saw it. So you know, you saw it for a moment, and it was like, and we got out of there. Okay, so sometimes it would be like the most rancid thing ever, and then the other thing was a bag of chips. You win. It was almost like a reward for throwing your friend under the bus. I think there was only one time where um, somebody stood up for the other person they were with. It was a daughter for her dad. Oh, God. And, yeah, I know. It was oh, like, man. yeah, really. She was like, no, do it to me. Leave him alone. <laughs> wow. That was for um, when they put the cage on people's heads and filled them up with snakes. Ooh. Oh. So, Yeah. Yeah, they have a cage on your head, and they fill it up with snakes. Oh, man. And yeah, that's all, like, bugs in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Like, here's the thing, too, though. In his old YouTube videos, you saw that um, they had fake snakes on people's heads. And I looked at those videos. I'm like, why is anyone afraid of this? It's a bunch of rubber snakes with water being dumped in your head. Mm-hmm. And people were like, get me out of here. Well, they had people with pinchers that were behind them. So when they dumped the snakes on them, then they had people pinching them so they thought that they were real oh. snakes and they couldn't tell the difference because something's pinching them while this water yeah. and things are moving yeah. around so and when they're in the heads in the cage they've got this block that goes around your throat so you cannot move oh no okay i mean every room was yeah god and then yeah like we said earlier but if you're you're getting fed gross stuff and you're throwing up you have russ telling them to Scoop the vomit back up and put it in their face. God. Now the thing that's so crazy too is like, I mean, it's not a business, so there's nobody coming through from the health department. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we're not talking about the most sanitary place. People are throwing up everywhere. Yeah, you know, this is. He had at that time he had twelve dogs, because, you know. He loves greyhounds. He has a great, you know, kept, keeps rescuing them. That's very sweet. That's it's very, very sweet. sweet. Yeah. He takes care of dogs while people are screaming for help in the backyard. So the admission price for McKinney Manor is four cans of dog food, which will be donated to Operation Greyhound, which is a greyhound rescue society. And that's where we, we got all of our greyhounds. <laughs> but every once in a while, like, they'd be walking through the hunt because... People are all tied up, and they're blindfolded, and they're walking through. And then a greyhound walks by, and people are like, what is that? What is that? And it's just a dog, and yeah. he's got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, there's nowhere else to go. The whole backyard is the haunt, so oh, it's just going to go there. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I know. It was so 
there were a lot of fake smells and authentic smells and all kinds oh, of crazy fuck. stuff. Look, I'm and Russ made up a bunch of stories that weren't even true because he wanted people to have all these weird conspiracy theories about what, what was going My on. My favorite I love this. is the I betting love one. This. Yes. yes. Yeah. That was really interesting. The rat race one. There, yeah. That's what I said, too. Yeah. I said the movie Rat Race. And yeah. he's like, oh, I haven't seen it. He <laughs> totally did Rat Race. Yeah. yeah it was a there total was rip-off. a conspiracy that he was involved with Vegas. Uh, just like betting rings and yeah, like in Rat Race where they put people in scenarios. I can just imagine and bet John Cleese it. betting on how how far someone would make it. And yeah, I thought that was interesting, and I was like, "Oh, this is a really interesting story." And everyone online was so mad about that, mm-hmm. and I guess it was a smart thing because people were like freaking out about that, and that wasn't even happening. I'm like, the real things you should be mad about are everything else. The hiring it, practices are terrible. Isn't it technically, I'm sure this varies state to state. Isn't it kidnapping what okay. he does? Okay, so oh, did I open up a can of worms? It's very interesting. It's very, no, it's very interesting, though, okay. because what do we hear? What do you see on the news all the time? The second someone says they want to leave somewhere and you don't let them leave, people call that kidnapping. Yeah. I mean, that's legal. That's law, right? Why hasn't Russ McCamey ever been sued? He was pretty lucky. But I think it has a lot to do with when the people go through it that I think where someone can feel victimized and where someone can be victimized, that the victim feels like it's their fault because they saw the videos before, they heard about the warnings, they read this very crazy waiver, And the waiver was insane. The waiver is like, we're going to stab you. I feel like the waiver probably wouldn't hold up in court. The waiver is a piece of paper you take to court when you sue somebody. It means nothing, right? But you're reading it, and it's like saying we're gonna we're gonna force feed you, we're gonna choke you, we're gonna stab you, we're gonna you're gonna basically we, we might even kill you. And it just says these things on a piece of paper. So I'm thinking maybe when people go through all that in their mind, then they go through it, and then they realize that. They're going to see all the footage also, and it all kind of starts adding up and it makes them go, oh, I just want this to be over. Yeah. Um, maybe. I mean, the thing is, it's... Um, I mean, he also heavily screens the people, so maybe he's keeping Some an people out. not so well. I'm sure. Some people not so well. Yeah. There were definitely a lot of people that should never have been there. Look, I don't but, know. But, but maybe he's keeping an eye out for like people who might be litigious, you know? Sure. Maybe. I don't know. Sure, but you it's know one of those. Better than me. Look, he definitely. <laughs> there were some people that got in there. I was like, man, this person should not be in your doorway. Yeah, mm-hmm. this person is not is not right for them at all. And he kept saying that he had all them do all these medical tests beforehand, or like get a doctor's note telling a doctor, well, this guy's going to drown me and force feed me and do all this stuff. Well, let me see that doctor. You're healthy enough. Let me just sign. No, no doctor exists that will yeah, do it right. Yeah, yes. Which is already crazy. And so now he, it's not open in California anymore. No. Because this but, was in San Diego originally, Yeah, you right? see like the beginning and middle end of what happened in, in California. Right. Yeah, yeah we, we captured that. And now there are two of them? Okay. I look, saw on Wikipedia said Nashville and some place know, in yeah. Alabama. Sure. Look. Did Russ when, edit that Wikipedia used to article? Say, <laughs> when he was in San Diego, problem. When, <laughs> when he was in San Diego, he always said that he had five locations. <laughs> okay. Red base, green base, blue, and then I think he said Mother's base room. four, <laughs> base oh, five. No. I, I was just like, I don't know. He went from colors to numbers. I was like, <laughs> I, I finally was like, where is it? He's like, all right, it's all in the backyard. Yeah. You know, he gets them in the van. They're all blindfolded. He's driving them around in circles. And then he takes them in the neck. And you think you're somewhere else. I okay. see. However, the new place, I haven't been there. But whenever he tells me anything, I take it with a fistful of salt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is real at all. You know? Okay. But um, actually just um, messaged me a bunch of stuff about what's going on there now. Uh. I mean, now he is forced to have a safe word. And where, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Where is, like, where for sure is there one now? In Tennessee. Tennessee, okay. Tennessee. So he's in Somerville. Somerville, Somerville, Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, the sheriff over there doesn't take, take kindly to not having safe words. Yeah. So, <laughs> good. Yeah, a lot of the law enforcement had um, seen my movie and called me. <laughs> wow. And I was getting phone calls from people saying, is that real? 
<laughs> I was like, yeah, like, but is it really real? I'm like, yeah, but is it like a Blair Witch documentary <laughs> or is it like a documentary about maybe a real Blair Witch? And I was like, oh my God, can I record this call? No, <laughs> no, you cannot. I was like, this is like, this is perfect though. And like, so there's no safe word, there's no way out. I'm like, no, that's just messed up. We got to get us, he needs a safe word. Have you seen um, Dark Tourist? No. All right. Now you saw my movie. Yeah. You get the unofficial, almost a sequel, <gasps> more like a, you know, spinoff. What? It's it's basically he has, a, he goes to different places, and does different things. And episode eight, the finale, he goes to the new McKamey Manor. Oh, oh shit! Fuck. Okay. That's what we're gonna do after. You right. Like. I'm telling you, like I was like, it was kind of like, <laughs> what's it called? Dark Tourist. Dark it's on Netflix. Tourist. It's on Netflix. Right, so great. it's a great, it's a great, great double feature. Honestly, if you're gonna watch Honors. When you watch Haunters. Yes. <laughs> then watch the last episode of Dark Tourist. Just just skip right to it. Okay. Because he's, he's there waiting for you. Cool. <laughs> and you'll see, you know, you'll see who Russ is with now. You'll see the whole thing. Yeah, and no spoilers. Very, I won't. Uh, but it, it really was a trip. <laughs> but before you do, yeah, Haunters. Haunters The priority. Art of the Scare. <laughs> yeah. So Haunters the Art of the Scare. So a couple things to know. Yeah. We're going to be doing something on September 25th. Yes. We're going to be doing um, like a streaming watch party. The idea is we're going to have a countdown. It's going to be like about 6 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time on a Tuesday night. And we're going to have a countdown, and then everyone's going to push play on Netflix. We're going to watch it together. It's going to be Char, Donald, um, Darren Lynn Bowsman. Oh, uh, cool. That's so and cool. And a couple people who survived McKamey Manor nice. that want to oh, talk about man. it. Um the Haunters of the 17th Door. We're going to be inside the 17th Door also. Great. Uh, we're going to be inside this one crazy room that they have this year that is absolutely insane to look at. And so that's, that's going to be a lot of fun too. And we're going to go through it. And as people ask us questions on like, well, we're going to probably do Facebook Live. As people ask questions, we'll answer them. And our favorite questions are going to win prizes. Nice. So they're gonna, we're going to have tickets to our favorite haunts. We're going to oh, have cool. um, autographed DVDs, uh, posters, a lot of fun stuff. What day is this? And um, that's going to be a Tuesday, September 25th. So is that a week from today when, when you're the watching pod- this? Yes. Okay. Yes, if you're watching up. this podcast or listening to this podcast, the, the day, day comes out. out. It, oh. Day come out. Day came out, comes out. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Then yeah, it's a week. It's a week. Uh, and and that, we'll put links to everything. Yeah, Thank we'll you. the hell out of yeah. it. It's so good. And it's we, so, oh man. Yeah. It, it was it was one of those movies where I was never checking the time to see how much was left because I just like wanted more and more and more. When you look at other Haunted House documentaries, sometimes you look at them like lovable losers. And it gives you the feeling that anyone can do it. But the haunts that I've seen, from the most inspiring to the most insane, the one thing they all have in common is, I can't do this. Yeah. Mm. This takes, this is art. And art, the word art to a real artist means sacrifice. You have to be willing to sacrifice everything to create art that even if it doesn't live permanently, it's going to live forever in someone's mind. I still remember the first home haunt I ever went to when I was a kid. I could tell you the exact layout. I know the pattern, the carpeting. I remember (laughs) the smell of the smoke machine. I remember it perfectly. And I remember the first time I went to Not Scary Farm, the first time I went to Universal Studios in 92, I'll never forget it. And the experience of first walking into the very first time, you know, and it's such an incredible art that these people are doing. Even the ones like Russ, where they've crossed a line, they have cro- he's crossed a line. Mm-hmm. But what has he done to create this? He was willing to, what, sacrifice all his money mm-hmm. You know, because people, they paid in dog food. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. paid in dog food, okay? <laughs> they weren't paying money. And he spent, it was like, I think it was around $500,000. Yeah, that's what he said. People are sacrificing everything. Their time, their time away from family, their money. We can argue what the reasons are some people are doing it for. Mm. But for most people, like Donald and Char and Rotten Apple, 907, my favorite home hunt. They're in the opening of my movie for just a moment. They're talking. They work on this all the time. This is their passion. They care so much about it, and this is their art. And you might even think in the back of your mind, why would Char, who is a scare actor who's been punched and been beaten, she's going to need knee and back surgery from everything she's done. Mm -hmm. 
but she keeps doing it. And some people go like, write it off like, well, why, why, why would she keep doing it? It's like, well, what about Muhammad Ali? You know, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he, he stayed a little too long, but he was the, the best that ever was. Mm -hmm. Some of the best athletes don't stop because they, they know when they stop, it's over. And I got the same feeling from Shar. She loves it so much and she's so good at it. Mm -hmm. She's so brilliant at it. She's such an artist. That's really why it was like the art of the scare. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wanted that idea of sacrifice, that idea of something that's hard to achieve, hard to, to reach, you know, and for people to look at them not as hobbyists, not as lovable losers, but as visionaries, whether they're doing, they've gone too far or they're doing it the right way, but they're, 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 there's something there. You can't go to school for it. There's nothing that no one can, that can teach you yet how to do this. But I wanted people to at least enter the conversation with a certain level of respect for the people that are in it. Yeah. You know, which is, which is rad. Now, when the movie's over, feel free to have an argument. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to debate it. Feel free to freak out about it. But mm -hmm. it definitely doesn't start off in a, a place of like hobbyists. It's like, mm -hmm. no, this is, yeah. this is something a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Uh, I I believe you accomplished your mission with that. Yeah, because that's absolutely. how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Then I can sleep easy now on my Casper. <laughs> that's Hell right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll have a movie review next week. Yeah. All right. I don't know what that is yet. Cool. And uh, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Carebeck C R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram as well. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. Hell yeah. Thanks, John. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you again. It was such was a great. pleasure. Yeah. This was so fun. And we'll see or uh, hear the rest <laughs> of you uh, next week. <laughs> Until then, uh, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Me Podcast. <laughs>